When Fantasia Barino won American Idol in 2004, it seemed as though things were finally looking up for the 19-year-old single mother from North Carolina. However, her life continued to be marred by misfortune. Here's a look at the tragic life of Fantasia Barino before, during, and after Idol. Fantasia Barino first experienced tragedy at an early age. The star painfully described in her 2005 memoir, Life is Not a Fairy Tale. Barino revealed that she was assaulted by a popular boy in their high school auditorium. She wrote of the assault, which took place when she was in ninth grade. I can barely recall the details. I just know that I shudder to think of how that single act changed me in a way that I didn't need to be changed. Eventually, Barino told her mother about what happened, who helped her report the crime to her school. The perpetrator was punished, though not enough in Barino's opinion, and she still faced a negative situation at school. Barino explained in a 2007 interview with O, oh, the Oprah magazine, that after reporting the boy, it became more difficult for her to attend school. We turned the guy in, but going back to school was hell. His homeboys would say, I'm going to do to you exactly what he did. They thought it was funny. That's when I quit school. Barino revealed in her memoir her lifelong struggles with reading and being able to function while being illiterate, writing, I get by in life, but my reading isn't what it should be. I'm working on it. I'm still not confident enough with words or letters. Barino's reading challenges made her experience on Idol more difficult since portions of the show required her to read from a script. In a 2007 interview, the singer said that she successfully faked her way through the scripted portions of the show, recalling, somebody would say, you know it's pronounced this way, and I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I'm country. Barino's famous Idol rendition of the George Gershwin standard Summertime, which Idol judge Simon Cowell once dubbed his favorite moment of the show, was a challenge for the star. As she wasn't familiar with the song, she was given a page of lyrics to learn. Fearful of the show's vocal coaches discovering her reading difficulties, Barino instead listened to the song until she memorized the words, which resulted in her successful performance. Three years after dropping out of high school and moving into her own apartment, 17-year-old Fantasia gave birth to daughter Zion. Barino told O oh in 2007 about her struggles during that period of her life, saying, When I moved out, started hanging out with the wrong people, and got pregnant, people were like, she ain't going nowhere now. I'd lost myself. Barino's struggles were made worse by the violence she said she experienced at the hands of her then-boyfriend and Zion's father, who was later arrested and charged for the abuse he inflicted on Barino. Court documents claimed that the boyfriend's behavior included both choking and punching her, and as Barino recalled, I looked in the mirror and I said to myself, look at me. I can't see out of one eye. I have knots on my head. My lips are swollen. And my little brother came to me one day, and I remember he says, Oh, you look bad. If you or someone you know is struggling with domestic abuse, please call or chat online with the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. Dubbed the Three Divas, Fantasia Barino and her fellow Season 3 American Idol contestants LaToya London and Jennifer Hudson were widely seen as frontrunners, with any one of them capable of winning the show. America was stunned, however, when all three women ended up in the show's elimination round in an April 2004 episode. Hudson, whose career exploded in the decades after Idol, was famously eliminated from the show, while London and Barino survived to compete in the next round. Speaking about the episode in a press conference that same week, Elton John, who served as a mentor for a previous Idol episode, blasted Idol viewers for allegedly engaging in racially biased voting, considering that Barino, London, and Hudson were all black women, saying, They have great voices. The fact that they're constantly in the bottom three, and I don't want to set myself up here, but I find it incredibly racist. Following the publication of her memoir in 2005, Barino's father, Joseph, filed a $10 million libel lawsuit against the book's publisher, Simon & Schuster. Joseph Barino disputed several of the book's allegations, including asking his daughter for money and that he valued his children's musical careers over their education. His suit also alleged that the singer didn't write her memoir and that the book was ghostwritten by her grandmother. Barino shared some difficult claims about her father in the memoir, writing about his need for perfection from the music to his own appearance. I run this family, I run this band. If I say we gonna rehearse when we get home, we gonna rehearse. In another passage, Barino described her father hitting her as a child when she appeared to sulk in front of other people, writing, I poked my lips out 
and acted mad in front of other people, my father popped me. I was so upset because I never did anything wrong. I was so ashamed of getting a beating in public. It never happened again. Barino encountered legal woes in 2010 when a North Carolina woman, Paula Cook, claimed in a child custody case filing that Barino had an affair with her husband, Antoine, leading to their divorce. Barino was called to testify during the couple's divorce proceedings later that year in a North Carolina courtroom and allegedly claimed that she became pregnant with Cook's child and underwent an abortion. Barino, who allegedly got Cook's name tattooed on her collarbone, further testified that she had been involved with him for a year and a half and believed he was separated from his wife during that time. Cook's divorce petition, however, reportedly claimed that Barino had been confrontational with her in a phone call, allegedly saying, Your husband don't want you. Maybe the next time that you get a husband, you'll know how to keep him. That's why he is here with me. Barino's manager, Brian Dickens, issued a statement at the time denying that the singer broke up the marriage. In 2011, Barino welcomed a second child, a son, Dallas Xavier. While Barino never disclosed the details of her child's father, she has reportedly been involved with Antoine since 2010. Shortly after Fantasia was accused in court documents of breaking up the marriage of her alleged beau, Barino's manager, Brian Dickens, found the star nearly unconscious in her Charlotte, North Carolina mansion in August 2010. According to his statement, the singer was hospitalized for being dehydrated and exhausted after taking too many pills, but that her injuries were not life-threatening. Barino later told VH1's Behind the Music in 2010 about her decision to take the potentially fatal dose of medication, revealing, I just sat in the closet and looked at the mirror and took all the pills in the bottle. I wanted to go to sleep and just be at peace. I knew exactly what I was doing. You can't accidentally take a whole bottle of pills. Barino attributed her depressed state to people's opinions of her and dealing with her family. Fortunately, though, Barino recovered and went on to win her first Grammy in February 2011 for Best Female R&B Vocal Performance for her song, Bittersweet. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call or chat online with the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. Fantasia Barino struggled for years to keep one of her homes in Charlotte, North Carolina, almost losing it in 2008 when she was accused of non-payment of a loan. Barino's house, which she later saved, was set for auction to pay back over $68,000 of Barino's taxes in 2006. Barino disputed the rumor, saying, I've always been a hard worker and I've always busted my tail to make sure me and my family have a roof over our heads. Barino also dismissed the buzz that American Idol judge Simon Cowell helped bail her out of debt, though she admitted she at least thought that part was cute. Barino eventually listed the house in 2012 and after failing to secure a buyer, gave up the house by transferring the deed to the bank, allegedly in order to avoid foreclosure on the property. Fantasia landed in the headlines over some social media drama in 2013 after the star shared a since-deleted Instagram post that many interpreted as homophobic. Mentioning current events, the star wrote, It's a lot that going on that the Bible speaks about we should not be doing. Barino added some thoughts on gay marriage and highlighted the legalization of marijuana as another sacrilegious event, while religion is an important part of Fantasia's life. I always go to church and I always give God praise because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't be sitting right here right now." Her comments still rubbed people the wrong way. The American Idol winner later walked back her comments in statements from herself and her representatives. After her reps claimed that Barino's words were taken out of context, Barino issued her own message, writing in part, "'It has been brought to my attention that something I said was taken out of context. I, Fantasia Monique Barino, don't judge anyone because I don't want to be judged. The gay community is one of my largest supporters. I support the gay community as they support me." In a separate post, she claimed several members of her team were homosexual as well. Several months later, perhaps as a show of goodwill to the LGBTQ community, Barino signed on to perform at the Long Beach Gay and Lesbian Pride Festival. In 2017, Fantasia Barino's brother, Xavier, was injured in a motorcycle accident. The singer revealed some two years later that, at that point, he was still not walking. Barino also spoke about the transformative impact the accident had on her brother, saying, "'His generation, it seems that they're a lot different from how we were raised. They're kind of lost, and they want microwavable careers, everything really quickly.'" Barino described the tough love approach she was taking with her brother's recovery. 
with his Instagram posts from 2019 showing him standing with the help of braces, commenting, I'm not going to give you anything. You've got to put the work in just like I did. When you put the work in, you cherish it more, you take care of it. Barino's brother's Instagram posts show his determination to recover from the injury, and his recent updates detail his progression to being able to walk again. Keep it up, Xavier. Fantasia Barino experienced more personal tragedy in 2018 when her 18-year-old nephew, Taekwon Washington, died in a North Carolina shooting. His obituary praised Washington's talent for gymnastics and other passions like football and singing and dancing. In a since-deleted Instagram post, Barino mourned the death of her nephew, writing, Auntie is so sorry, baby. R.I.P. to my oldest nephew. The singer also sent prayers to her brother and Washington's father. After the shooting, a suspect was charged with the first-degree murder of Barino's nephew, as well as robbery with a dangerous weapon. After enduring her share fair of relationship dramas, Fantasia Barino married Kendall Taylor in 2015 after a quick courtship of just three weeks. And he falls to his knees, he reaps over and he gets his oil, he takes my hands, and he prays for me. Hey, when you know, you know, right? In addition to the expedient engagement, Barino raised some eyebrows with a 2019 interview in which she suggested that women should submit to men and let their male partners play the dominant role in their relationships, saying, You've got to let the man be the head of the house. You have to learn how to submit. You can still be a queen. A queen plays a part. A king needs his queen. But a queen has to sit back and allow her king to be the king. Naturally, those comments didn't sit well with everyone. Barino and Taylor attempted to clarify their stance on gender roles in a September 2019 Instagram video. In the clip, Taylor said, Submission is supposed to be a beautiful song and dance between two lovers. What's happened is men have abused that power. Forgive me, they've abused that gift. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite performers are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.